Ciao everyone, it's John John here and we have an exciting video for you today. We just got a new box into the showroom and I'm excited to open it with you guys today. John's Bones. Here at John's Bones, we are an osteological supply company. We work with human osteology that has been retired from the medical bone trade. Until the mid 80s, it was common for universities to require medical students to purchase real human bones for studying. Oftentimes, this led to companies that filled this demand. Fast forward 40 years later, these pieces still exist, and oftentimes these doctors are no longer studying medicine. A lot of them have retired at this point and no longer have a use for these bones. We work with the general public in order to reclaim these pieces, and then we photograph them, curate them on our website, and then partner with universities and institutions all over the country to try to get these medical pieces back into educators and working professionals that can stand to benefit from this. The history of the medical bone trade isn't commonly discussed, and here at John's Bones, we believe in open transparency. So today I wanted to take you through the process of actually acquiring a skeleton in that we purchased from an individual. So this specific piece was primarily purchased back in the 60s for medical education. Unfortunately, the individual's mother had passed away and they didn't know what to do with the skeleton. So they contacted us here at John's Bones and we just got this piece in today. On our website, we actually have a submission form. This allows our clients to get in contact with us to submit photos and descriptions of what they have in their possession. And hopefully we can figure out a good solution on what we can do with the client's possession. The original intention for these pieces were for medical education. And after the individual has passed away, if the next of kin are no longer in medical education or can benefit and learn from these pieces, we really find that this is a disservice. So hopefully getting these pieces back into the showroom, we can then figure out a better use for these pieces than having them just be left in an attic. For today's unboxing, I'm currently expecting between eight to nine new skeletons that are coming into the showroom. So I don't quite know which one this is. So we will be figuring out what's in this box together. So one thing that I also wanted to talk about is really the scale of this industry. In 1983, there were over 60,000 skulls sent to the US and the UK. So what I really wanted to open up and talk about is that concept. Every week we get between 20 to 30 submissions on our website. There's so many pieces out there in the US and people just don't know what to do with it. So this is really where we come in to try to offer a valuable service to help individuals that no longer know what to do with these pieces. So here we have the box today and I'm excited to open it with you guys. If this is your first time watching the channel, be sure to like and subscribe for more amazing content. So when working with the general public, it's always super exciting but nerve wracking to see how they packed it. I hope this skeleton has come safe and sound. It's really our goal for preservation. So any instance of damage is extremely upsetting. So oftentimes I work extremely close with the client to make sure the skull and skeleton is packed adequately before it's shipped to us. So right off the bat, amazing work. The client had reinforced this package with wood. This really ensures that nothing gets crushed during the shipping process. Fantastic first start. So this is great. When you look at the real human skeleton, the most fragile part when shipping a skeleton is actually the rib cage. This is the most commonly broken part of the skeleton when it's being shipped. So this client did an amazing job packing in the sternum to make sure that there was additional padding while it was being shipped. So this is actually a skeleton that we received and prior to it coming to our collection, you can see that there was damage in the sternum. So this can be what happens if the skeleton is not shipped and packed correctly. So this is actually the most challenging part of shipping the skeleton is the torso. So I'm amazed to see how well it was padded and protected here. So here we have the skeleton. It's perfectly wrapped up. It looks like there's no damage at all. And I'm super excited to see how well the client packed it.
So right off the bat, we can tell exactly what this skeleton is and what the manufacturer was that prepared this piece based on its hardware, its style, and how it was articulated. We've had the honor of being able to interview a lot of the original articulators that worked at some of these companies, as well as reading original manuscripts and catalogs. This has helped us better identify and date different pieces when they come into the showroom. So taking a look at this specific skeleton, this specific paint, sternum preparation and glue was only used by one company in particular, and that was Carolina Biological Supply. This was a medical supply company that used to sell educational models of all types to different universities and educators all over the country. Within this category, they also did human skeletons. So being able to identify what company prepared the skeleton helps us with the history and provenance of understanding these pieces better. As you can see, the client here expertly packed the pelvis and the sternum, and this prevented it from being crushed during transit. So fantastic job, and I just wanted to highlight this for you guys in the video. As you can see here, the bubble wrap is woven in between the ribs and the client just did an amazing job packing this. So thank you so much for taking care in preserving the skeleton and making sure that it arrives to us safely. Interesting side note when looking at the skeleton, looking at the pelvic opening as well as the different structures that I can see, this individual looked to be a biological male. Interestingly enough, there seems to be a growth here that is growing onto the sacrum. We're gonna have our forensic anthropologist take a look at this. This is the importance of real human bones. Because of skeletal variation, no one skeleton is the same. Every single skeleton is unique in its own way, and this is why medical students need to study a variety of different skeletal structures in order to better understand human anatomy. Also interesting fact, this is extremely rare for skeletal articulations, but this piece actually comes with the hyoid bone. This is actually one of the only floating bones in the entire body, aside from the patellas. And this bone is commonly referred to as the murder bone because oftentimes if an individual is strangled, the hyoid actually snaps. So this is one thing that gave it that name. Once again, this client gets an A+. They made sure that the skull was secured within another box. We have seen some rough shipping within our past, so to see so much attention to detail, it's amazing to see. So I just removed a layer of saran wrap that was encasing the skull. In the rare instance that the teeth shatter because the teeth is extremely brittle on these skulls, we have them all contained within the saran wrap. That helps with preservation and from there we're able to reconstruct and restore anything that might be damaged. So oftentimes with these articulations, there are different bolts and pins that allow them to be reassembled. So we're gonna put the skull back on the skeleton. Another interesting side note when looking at the skull, from this viewpoint, it actually looks like the individual had scaphocephaly. This is one of many terms that are used to describe different skull shapes that can occur over time. So taking a look at it, this is a Carolina Biological Supply skeleton. We know this because of three features. The first is the sternum. Only Carolina Biological Supply did preparations like this, as well as the glue used, and as well as how the skeleton was painted. This is very unique to this specific company. <laughs> hey guys, look, Chong came to help us with the unboxing. Finding original pamphlets and catalogs are extremely hard, but luckily here at John's Bones, we were able to track down an original Carolina Biological Supply catalog. 
So from cross-referencing photos that we can see in this original catalog to this skeleton here, we were able to authenticate that it was an actually an original Carolina Biological Supply skeleton. So one thing that I also wanted to point out, similarly to our videos on the different types of medical skulls, this is actually an explanatory skeleton. Similar to an explanatory skull, this skeleton actually comes with painting that describes the muscle and ligament connections in the human body. So here you have it everyone, this is the skeleton unboxed from the client. One thing that I wanted to point out was this skeleton at one point was complete. But as you can see here, it's missing its arms and feet. Because these pieces were oftentimes privately owned, we see skeletons with all different types of damage and missing pieces over the course of my career. It's extremely common for skeletons and skulls to be missing different pieces. Sometimes it's missing the top of the skull, other times it's missing arms and legs. But once it gets to John's Bones, we do our best to preserve this so educators and working professionals can stand to benefit and learn from these important pieces. So now that the piece has been properly unboxed, we go through the process of itemizing it here at the showroom to make sure it's documented within our database. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We wanted to be as transparent as possible about where we source our pieces from, and we thought that this was a perfect example to show you guys where we actually get the skeletons from. Thank you guys for making it to the end, and stay tuned for more fun bone content.